All right, so subtraction of binomials. We barely got to this in class today, but hopefully you're watching this video and hopefully everything will come and make more sense. Subtraction of binomials, it just has one extra step added in. Essentially, our extra step that's added in is to pay attention to this minus sign that's going on. So in order to pay attention to that, what we can do as a sort of logical step would be to pretend this minus sign is actually adding a negative 1. And so negative 1 is essentially multiplying the x or the z squared, the z to the third, the z to the f negative 5 and the z to the negative or z to the 2 or in the 2z. And if that's the case, this whole back side can be rewritten. And that's what this first step is. Rewrite the subtraction portion of your binomial as addition of the opposite sign. So essentially I'm going to rewrite this first bi binomial as 11z cubed minus 2z plus 4 and I'm going to still have that in parentheses and then I'm going to rewrite this other part as addition of the opposite. So we had a positive z squared initially, now we have a negative z squared. We had a positive z to the third, now we have a negative z to the third. We have a negative 5, we're going to make it a positive 5. And we're going to do the same thing with the 2z. Okay, so now this is all rewritten as opposites. Now, let's identify like terms. We have a z to the third, z to the third in both of ours, and I'm underlining them with two underlines. We have a negative 2z and a negative 2z both in each equation and I have a constant that I'm gonna box and another constant that I'm gonna box so now I've identified all my like terms now let's group them together so grouping them together we have 11 z to the third plus or minus z cubed or we could write it as well plus a negative z cubed we have a minus or plus a negative 2z and minus 2z and we have plus 4 whoops wrote that wrong plus 4 plus 5 and we do have one last term right here a z squared so minus z squared. So now we can combine these like terms. We can actually do that math. 11 minus 1 equals 10z cubed. Negative 2 minus 2z, or negative 2z minus 2z equals a negative 4z. 4 plus 5 equals 9. And we have that negative z squared. Now we need to write our final answer in standard form, so we need to find this, uh, the degrees of each one, each of these terms. This first degree of the 10z to the third is 3. We have the second one, which is 1. This next one is 0, and this one is 2. And we're all basing that off of the exponents that are here. Now this exponent on the negative 4z to the z or negative 4 times z is essentially a 1. And that 9 doesn't have, an, have a z with it, so that z is technically to the 0, because z to the 0 power is 1, so 1 times 9 is 9. So let's rewrite this. We're going to have 10z to the third, we're writing it in greatest to least, minus z squared plus a negative 4z plus 9. This negative 4z could also be rewritten as minus 4z. Either one would work. So now let's try some practice problems. Here are our practice problems. Let's do our first one. We have 2x squared plus 6 minus 4x squared. Simple enough. Let's rewrite that. We have 2x squared plus 6 minus 4x squared. So first we need to rewrite our subtraction as addition of the opposite. So 2x squared plus 6 is going to stay the same, but we can rewrite this as saying plus 
negative 4x squared. Okay, now let's identify our like terms. Here's one like term, and there's its opposite, sort of other half, and we have our 6, and there's no other like constant in the other side. So let's rewrite this with our like terms. We have 2x squared minus 4x squared, or plus a negative 4x squared, plus 6. So let's pay attention to the coefficients in front. 2 minus 4 is negative 2x squared plus 6. And it's in standard form because our terms are from least to greatest in the degree um, in degree format, in degree categorization. So let's look at our next problem. We have a to the fourth minus 2a minus 3a to the fourth minus 3a plus 1. So let's do our first step, essentially rewrite this second equation as addition of the opposite. So let's start out with a to the fourth plus, or minus, oops, minus 2a plus negative 3a to the fourth plus 3a minus 1. So we're not, if you've noticed, I've switched the signs on every single one of these terms. Now, let's combine like terms. We have a to the fourth and then a to the uh, negative 3a to the fourth. We have negative 2a. I'm going to do three lines under those. And we have 3a. Those are like terms. And let's box our constant, and there's no other constant on the other side. So that now we can combine our like terms. We have, or we can rewrite it with the like terms next to each other. We have a to the fourth plus negative 3a to the fourth. We have plus a negative 2a, and I did that because subtraction is just like adding the opposite, plus 3a plus a negative 1. Same thing as before, adding the opposite. So a to the fourth plus a negative 3a is negative 2a to the fourth. Negative 2a plus 3a is a positive a plus a negative 1. So technically, that's our final answer because everything is in standard form. We have one last problem, and let me scoot over here so I can see that last problem and have some space to work. So we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 minus x squared plus x plus 1. So let's do our first step, which is essentially changing the second equation to adding the opposite. So 2x squared minus 3x squared plus 1. That all stays the same. And now let's add or turn the second equation into adding the opposite. So plus negative x squared plus a negative x plus a negative 1. All of those terms have now changed positive to negative, or negative to positive. So now let's combine like terms. We have a 2x squared. Oh, and there's an x squared in that same equation, and then there's another x squared in the next equation. We also have a negative x on this one, but there's no other negative x, so we're not going to do anything with that. And let's do a squiggly line for our constants. We have a 1 and a negative 1. So now let's rewrite this and group up all of our like terms. We have 2x squared plus a negative 3x squared plus a negative x squared for our first terms. We also have the next one, which is negative x. Awesome. And our last one of 1 plus a negative 1. So let's do all that work. We have 2x squared plus a negative 3x squared plus a negative x squared. So 2 plus a negative 3 equals negative 1, plus another negative 1 equals negative 2x squared. The next one is still just a negative x. 
and our last 1 plus a negative 1 equals 0. So our final answer for this problem is going to be negative 2x squared minus x. Done. Hope this helps.